So welcome back to another episode of McCall Media TV, whereby myself, Angela McCall, is basically having a bit of a chat today with two fantastic ladies who have been on quite the journey for the last 12 months, whilst they have both been writing their respective books and working on that all important deadline to get the publication of their books live out into the market. Now, both ladies are going live within the next couple of weeks. Um, we filmed this today in late March, ready for anticipation for their books going live early April and this is what they had to say about it. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to um, my very, very first ever kind of live episode, as it were, of McCall Media TV. And we're going to be talking, obviously, about your publishing paths at the moment and what you guys have been up to. So just let's take a second for you guys to introduce yourselves. And if we start with you, who are you? I'm Anne Ayachi. I am a weight loss and healthy lifestyle expert. I help busy women to uh, lead a healthy lifestyle and more importantly, regain their confidence, their self-esteem, their health obviously as well, and um, feel happy within themselves. And what's the, what's the book that you have been working on? So I just uh, wrote a book called Five Simple Steps to Releasing the Real You. Uh, which is coming out on March 24th, even though I got the uh, books today in. So I will be able to, for those that pre-order the book, I can make sure that they do get the book on the 24th. Excellent. Um, so yeah, all very exciting. Cool stuff. And over to you, Julia. Can you introduce yourself and tell us what you're up to? My name's Julia Furlot and I'm a romance novelist. It's a passion I've had for many years as a hobby and I decided to start it as a business just to do something I love. Um, my first novel is called Trust In You um, and it's available from Amazon um, for pre-order now and it's on sale from the 6th of April. So what we're talking about today is really your journeys, because obviously yours is not coming out until the uh, first week of April. Yours is imminently in the next week or so. So really, you guys have been on quite the journey so far, obviously starting, getting to this sort of start line, which is basically what we're going to explore today. So if we start with you, Anne, now, if you can explain to us the type of publishing path that you've gone down and what's been involved with that, that would be great. <laughs> So, um, so last year, January 2019, I decided to write a book and that was one of my plans for the year. Um, I went on a book writing course because I had no clue how to write a book, um, how to structure a book and what to do. And eventually I had the outline planned uh, end of July 2019. And I started writing. I thought August was going to be quiet, started writing, but actually the most writing that I've done was between somewhere mid-September till uh, mid-November. So the whole process really took me about two months to write. Um, at the same time, obviously, I looked at different publishing parts and um, I realized that without being known, without an, a massive audience, it was hard to get a traditional publisher. Uh, involved or a publishing deal. I didn't want to go the route of self-publishing mainly because I didn't want to um, uh, have to look at all the things that I have no clue about when it comes to publishing. It's not my, my forte. Um, so I went down something that's called the hybrid route, which is something between self-publishing and uh, traditional publishing, where the whole process is taken care of when it comes to from the minute you submit to your, uh, your manuscript up to the minute where the book is coming out, plus later on the supply to uh, you know, Amazon bookshops, etc. Okay, so Julia, if that's okay with you, can you just explain to us how your path has differs because you've gone down the full self-publishing path, is that, is that right? Yes, I have. I did look at some hybrid publishers, but I decided that um, the marketing of the book was the most key part for me because making it accessible to retailers and customers directly, um, that's reasonably straightforward through the self-publishing route. Um, but I wanted to ensure that the marketing behind that made people aware that they wanted to buy it. Um, so I decided to go directly through Ingram Sparks rather than KDP. Um, I did that because I believe 
Ingram is the largest wholesaler in the country in the UK um, and obviously um, retailers such as Amazon um, do of course um, upload directly from the Ingram website so it was for me a better route than using KDP directly. Okay so actually I mean obviously this has all been a learning curve for the both of you but is there anything that you've come across that's been like sort of totally overwhelming something you've been like oh my god why have I done this to myself? Give them the, the bumps in the road as it were to watch out for depending on your different path. Um, for me really running a business it was really about finding time um, so finding I, I probably my friends haven't seen me much around uh, for quite a while so really, especially as I had, um, I had to look at my own business and find the right time to publish the book. So for me, busy times in the year are generally January time, um, before Easter and September time. So I had to look at how would the book affect or, or work well with my business. So January time, there's loads of health books that are coming out. So I would have been drawn uh, in between all the big authors. Um, so for me, it was all Easter time or September. Um, so, so the deadline was definitely a big factor for me and working, you know, nights, weekends and yeah. in between clients. So, okay. that, so that probably was the most stressful one. Right. So it's obviously taken a lot more time and, and obviously eaten into your sort of normal day to day yeah. life routine. And what about yourself? You're, you're working as well, aren't you, at the same time as doing this? Yeah, I do have a day job and a family, so time commitments is an issue, but for me it was more about the challenge of wanting to run my own business. I've never had the opportunity before, and I wanted to turn what was my passion for reading and writing into something that was uniquely just for me. Um, and obviously the joy I get from my readers reading my work is just amazing, and it's very satisfying to know that I've put that together and it's something that I've done on my own so I wanted to learn to be an author but also to learn to be the business side of things as a publicist and a marketing manager and I get to control all roots of that through running it through self-publishing whereas I believe um, although there are many many advantages of using a traditional publisher should you be lucky enough I think owning my own product and being able to develop it how I want rather than how someone else might be directing me is is really quite key to the satisfaction for me as well. Okay, okay. I think that's as well where the hybrid one is kind of nice as well, is I still have full control of, in the same way that you self-publish, I have full control of the content, how I wanted it, what I wanted to do with it, as opposed to being in a traditional publisher where you're not kind controlling of told anything. To do. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, how does it work then with regards to things like your copyright laws, how you own or, I mean, obviously I know your, your business in that sense is giving you the whole freedom to do what you want with the self-publishing route, but what does, how do you get around things like the ISB, N numbers, the, the copyright laws, those kind of like legalities as it were? So, I think that's <laughs> where the fundamental, I, I, well I presume, because I didn't go through down the hybrid route, um, but I think that's where the fundamental differences may lie when, for example, you choose to go through KDP or you choose to do it through Ingram Sparks, for example. For me, I took advice from the Author Learning Centre and it was quite uh, an important topic to own your own ISBNs if you're going to be a self-published author. So that's one of the routes I decided to do. So I bought my own ISBNs oh. through Nielsen. Um, whereas if Amazon, for example, and um, this is just my understanding of the industry, um, if Amazon, for example, were to set you up with an ISBN through KDP, they actually own the full rights to your work. Um, so you're not, in my understanding, able to then take that book and publish, um, uh, distribute it through other retailers for example yeah, you have whereas tied. through uh, through Ingram Sparks I own my own product I own how it's distributed if I want to remove That's it from really sale cool. I can do exactly what I like with it because I own it and with that comes the copyright right okay so really the big takeaway there is the fact that you've actually gone and bought the own your own isbn which gives you yes. the freedom to choose which channels to distribute it yeah it's my it's my product I am the publisher cool and how does that yes, differ so. for yourself Anne if that's okay So for me, it's probably very similar. 
Um, so although I didn't buy it personally, my publisher bought it on my behalf. I still pay the ISBN uh, fee every year when it's being renewed. Um, so, so definitely still the same and I own all the copyrights. Do they own the ISBN or do you own it? Um, I think I do. Um, so I pay okay. for it. Um, and in the book, it does say that all copyrights are mine. So um, I can still do, which is not the case. Which is when, key, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and that's why I can do with it whatever I want. If I tell my publisher I don't want it in these shops or that shops, um, they still will do it for me as well. Talk me through a little bit with regards to like the technology aspect and the formatting and getting, you know, basically compiling the book and how that's worked for you. Well, in terms of actually formatting it, putting it together, I, would, I wanted a quality product and I wasn't <laughs> going to achieve that if I did that fully myself the first time round. So I went to the London Book Fair last year and I did quite a lot of research into different different companies that were able to do that for me. And I went through a company called Hybert Design, which is a very reputable marketing and um, print company. <laughs> they obviously formatted my book for me. Um, they've done all my covers and my logos for me. So um, I had a reputable company do that for me. I wasn't brave enough to adventure with the technology for the first time for me. I wanted it to look like someone knew what they were doing. <laughs> so that was, that was a service I was willing to pay for. That's cool. That's cool. And Anne, can you sort of shed some light on that for us, please? Yeah, so it's very interesting what you're saying because it is important to look professional for sure. I've seen even books, you know, published by hybrid publisher or traditional one that, in my opinion, look awful. Um, so the, one of the things that the, the nice thing with the hybrid is that I didn't have to go and look for uh, a typesetter or, or stuff like that. So they took care of all that. However, it was per my input. So I went through all the books that I have at home. And uh -huh. I have a massive pile and I took pictures of outlines and outlays that I liked. And I just, you know, uh, sent it over to them and said, this is what I'd like. Um, I'd like these bits to be with a line and indented. I like, you know, I knew what I wanted um, and that's what they provided with. If I had just given them the green light of do whatever, it probably, I would have gotten whatever. Um, and then it would have been the choice of whoever typesetted it or, or laid out the, the book, which was not specifically. So, so essentially yeah. what you're saying is, although you've gone down the hybrid route, you managed to retain creative control and management 100%. of the end product and basically direct almost like your minions, as it were, to go and deliver and, and yeah. put together what you wanted. And then they'd come back and report in yeah. and, and you'd fine tune and tweak. Okay. like physical books obviously you've both shown them there today have either of you gone down the kindle route by any chance so it's an ebook through ingram sparks they upload those to ebook or um paperback however you choose straight away so immediately the files if you've obviously submitted the epub files or the pdf files or mobi files um obviously you submit those to ingram and they'll upload those to the retailers websites in both formats. so you get that as part of your your process as it's well. just the way that it works it's, it's depending on how you upload your file to ingram so as soon as i'd uploaded my files the uh, barnes and noble book depository amazon automatically had them appearing on their website without me doing anything i've oh, never cool. actually contacted amazon directly okay. they've just gone through the wholesalers list from ingram anyone who wants to stock the book can order directly from the wholesaler okay and and, and Anne, how does that work with the hybrid dream so yeah i got uh, i got automatically as well a, a version for kindle and other e-readers um, and that will be uploaded everywhere as well. So be it on Amazon or be it on my website or something like that. Yeah. Which is funny you should say that because my next question is how do you plan on promoting it? Because I know you both have got your own websites as well. So uh, let's start with you, Danelle, as, as you've just mentioned it. So how do you plan on getting your product out to the market as it were? That's one of the things, for instance, that my publisher, although, you know, he goes to book fairs and, and other places and uh, do as 
much promotion from a publisher side that he does, um, it's still up to totally up to me to promote my book. Uh, a book launch planned. <coughs> um, I had two planned, unfortunately, with the uh, coronavirus situation. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, my publisher's book launch has been cancelled. Oh bless. Um, oh, but dear. we'll do it, you know, later in the year. Yeah. Uh, my personal book launch will be done online on the 30th of, uh, of March. And yes. it's just about promoting everywhere, everywhere you go, be it on, at networking meetings, um, you know, on social media. So pretty everywhere. much like you would any other style of product yes. for a business, okay. Anything, there's not no difference at all. I mean, there's a few other things as well. So obviously at the moment, um, you know, I, I was uh, waiting for a date from Waterstones and your local library, there's book signing and book events. Right now it's all on hold, which is really yeah, a bad Yeah, it's a bad timing, isn't but, it? Hey ho, you know, those are the kind of stuff that is going to happen as well once, uh, you know, we're back to our normal lives. The, those kind of shops do like local authors, so they're very happy yes, to do an event. Yeah. Uh, local library as well. Yes, yes. So definitely something that um, we you can all think of when, when uh, launching. Julia, uh, um, over to yourself because you've obviously started the promotional path as well. Uh, so tell us about some of the experiences because I know you've been in your local newspaper as well lately and obviously I think you've also launched your own website. So tell us about what your path has been like. Well, obviously, marketing is such a massive topic. You've got social media, you've got journalists. Yeah, I mean, I can't go through my entire marketing <laughs> plan right now in five minutes. <laughs> but in a nutshell, I'll run through some of the um, the main points. I think also you mentioned that how was I getting my my books physically to distributions. Yeah. I would just wanted to point out that physically, Ingram would handle that for me. It's a print on demand service although I have done it on a non-sale, non-return basis. So that obviously is a disadvantage when retailers are looking at stocking my book. So yeah, in terms of the, um, the publicity and the promotion, I came up with some general ideas of where my customers might like to hang out, um, how I could interact with them, and contacted a local spa company called The Glorious Spa. They allowed me to hold some book launches in their salons, which was a great favour and marketing tool for both of us um, and I invited some journalists down and obviously I was giving out free copies of my book so not only was I planning for the participants of the day to come along have a pamper enjoy themselves but we got to sit and actually have a proper chat about literature and what they like to read I got to know some of the people who might like to read romance so it was a great it was a great uh, networking tool for for me and for obviously the glorious bar as well so not only was the that deliberately planned at valentine's six weeks or so before my launch date the pre-orders would then benefit from that publicity as well I've, I've, I've also got blog tours planned and i'm collaborating with a local music association because the character in my book has written a song so that's another marketing tool i've been dealing with artists in Romania for my website oh, wow. and that's exciting. yeah I, I've, I've, that's um, I've been I've been having a lot of fun with it <laughs> I could <It's>, tell uh, <laughs> definitely a project that I've been enjoying but yeah there's in terms of the marketing there's so much I can talk about I've also been using a social media company that's been helping me on a weekly basis the in-person events and I'm setting up a book a book club soon for romance readers and writers oh, wow. in a local wow. hairdressers that's clever so they're going to help me publicize that as well so it's a lot of fun I'm, I'm just enjoying it the path it takes one of the biggest like the, the big question that I want to know and I don't necessarily need specifics but sort of money if obviously you know starting out on this journey you're gonna like any business you're gonna need to invest starting it out if you've got any advice for people that have not done this before and are literally going to be watching this for some food for thought and so forth could you just give us some sort of ideas on on the types of figures that you'd need to kind of semi budget for to get you know to help them get to that starting line sure so i i one of the reasons why as i said i didn't go to self-publishing route because i didn't want to have to make choices uh, of every part of the thing um so package deals though i have looked at different uh hybrid publishers so um it was anywhere between three and a half grand to six grand all right um, so definitely something that you need to look at and one of the reasons why i made the choice that i made 
one of the things that we have to remember is that if we only sell through Amazon or through the bookshops, we barely make uh, a pound, maybe a pound 50 or even less per book sold. So I can put that into, into like perspective. How much are you, if you don't mind me asking, how much are you retailing your book for? So my book is retailed at 12 99 Right, so that's barely 10% uh, of the cost of your book is actually only gonna, if you was to go yes. just that, right, okay. That, yeah. See, that's that's kind of interesting, I think. Definitely. To, now, if I sell my book directly through my website, I'll probably make around 9 to £10 per book. That makes a huge okay. difference, which is so why self-published. That makes a, a, a massive difference. But more importantly, for me, it's like, yes, it was an investment uh, when it comes to costs giving out. But my publisher really pushed me to have a um, a uh, companion material available so that people that are working through my book can go to my website, oh, okay. download uh, the workbook that comes with it, and then I'll have their details. I was going to say, because then you actually get the information as opposed yes. to it being through, right, okay. Exactly. I'll once I have their, <laughs> Once I have their details, um, and then I can start and mail upsell direct. to them and mail direct and all that kind of stuff, which is a little bit different to when you self-publish because I think as far as I'm aware of, you have, if you have full control, you have people's details, that- so you can do stuff with it, but it depends what route you're going through. How would you say do you in that sense of the same, same um, kind of ethos with regards to what you're selling your book at, how much sort of return and what's it cost you because of the self-publishing being entirely different and you've obviously had to make those decisions as you've gone along? Well, I think if you're looking at a budget as a new uh, fiction author, um, I think you need to decide of what you want to get out of it. If you want to get a career out of it that you're going to have a long longevity with, um, then obviously you need to invest in a product that's going to be reputable and correct, <laughs> no spelling errors and that sort of thing. And that sort of professionalism, as with any business, takes money. I mean, I spent more than perhaps most people would need to because it's my passion, it's my hobby, um, and it was important to me. Um, but I think you can get a book cover, for example, anything from 50 to a thousand pounds. It depends on what you want to invest and what you're looking to get out of it in the long term. Um, the one piece of advice I would always suggest is do not scrimp on your editor. If you're going to invest your money, it's editing is absolutely crucial do pay the professional wages that a professional would expect because you're getting a service that is going to reflect that um and also don't underestimate how much marketing is going to cost yeah i mean i haven't underestimated it but there's always something to pay for (laughs) in fact i think um i think when i first started out i estimated that the production of the book you know the editing and getting it online would be you know x amount but actually the marketing has been equal to that easily uh particularly i think it depends on how much you're able to do yourself and as already mentioned i'm, I'm a bit of a technophobe <laughs> so i needed the extra support in designing a website and setting up my social media and mailing lists and things so obviously i've had to pay for extra services as well but then i know that i've had the quality service that i needed so. kind of wrap up today as it were if you was to give one piece of advice for yourself back 12 months ago when you was on that starting line knowing what you know now in hindsight being a wonderful thing what is it that you would tell yourself to watch out for or or you know that that snippet of advice that you wish you knew then that you know now um it's a tricky question really um i'd probably would do it again (laughs) <laughs> um, I need, you know, um, so you've not been put off. <laughs> no, I'm not. I've not been put off, but I probably won't do it next year. I'll, I'll wait an extra year. Um, but it's been an amazing experience, and for me, uh, as running a business, what has it helped me is that it has helped me express what I do and explain what I do in a much easier way. So it has helped me to come up with content for my my business uh, in a much easier way. It has helped me help my clients in a much better way as well, because everything I had to review everything I do and everything I believe in when it comes to business uh, in in a certain way. So it has helped me massively grow 
uh, my my you know grounding in my own business uh, a lot so and would you like to add to any of that anyone struggling with weight loss get the book do the work that's in the book and uh, any questions let me know but no it's been an amazing experience and I would highly recommend anyone to uh, to go through it. Um, it takes time, it takes motivation, and it takes determination as well. Uh, and yourself, Julia, just to sort of wrap this up a little bit, is there anything that you would have told yourself a year ago that you know now that you didn't? I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but I just thought- Well, know. obviously I went through the beta reading process, because obviously I'm looking at this from an author's perspective as well as a publicist. I went through the beta readers, I went through an editor who was a proofreader as well. Um, I had the typesetting done. And then I realized there was typos in the book. <laughs> so then I paid a second time to get oh, those bless. typos corrected. Okay. Then I had, in my view, a very finished product and started distributing it. And as much as I'd researched on the internet, I found some great new friends in America that have supported me with getting the cultural inaccuracies in my book sorted. Oh, so I'm bless. now going through the retype setting again, because as I said, I have used a company although I did do research clearly it wasn't sufficient so retype setting it all again at the last minute is actually quite an expense I wish I could have avoided but I think that's something that you learn learning curve as yeah. you go along and I'm a bit of a perfectionist so <laughs> we all are don't worry <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I think I'd get proofreaders to read it again okay. you just can't have enough proofreaders in okay my and then one last final question for you both um so obviously and you said you would do it again but you're going to give yourself a break and you i think you said this is the first of three books is it so is there yeah. any more on the on the horizon coming this way <laughs> you'll see that this romantic suspense series continues in uh, two more books so my first on sale in 6th of april is trusting you Follow, oh, my cat's appeared. Followed by... That's okay, don't worry. Um, faith in cats. him and then believe in me. So, um, yeah, I have got a wow. series coming out and okay. other other novels and interactive sections so readers can get involved just in my characters. the first of many books on the to website. come. Okay. Yeah. Right. Cool stuff. Well, I just want to wrap it up there, girls, because we're actually going to be running out of time. Yeah, no worries. So thank you very much for taking the time to join me on my very first ever been a pleasure. endeavour on uh, live interviews, as it were. Thank you very much for joining us on this conversation today. I have learned loads of stuff because I had no idea what a hybrid route was. I think there's some insights there that you've been giving me as well on, on things that you've done that I didn't know about. Oh my god what a fantastic interview that was with both Julia and Anne and I don't know about you guys but I have learned so much I have done the self-publishing route path before with a couple of uh, business orientated books but I have not done anything in the way that these two ladies have been tackling it and I have just learned loads so I hope it was as useful to you guys as it was to me and please do support these fantastic ladies but if you can and you did like this please subscribe to my channel because in six months time from now or thereabouts I'm going to be re interviewing interviewing these ladies to see how their journey has gone so far between then basically getting themselves to that starting line and the six months of promotional efforts and obviously what Wonga they've managed to be able to earn in that time so we'll be getting all the inside gossip details and information that you can imagine and any of those kind of questions that you'll have we've got six months to work on it before we touch base with them and see how they were getting on so please do subscribe stay notified thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of McCall Media TV bye bye for now Oh